Hello and welcome back to the XRP Insider News, where we bring you the most up-to-date and exciting XRP news. We're distributing 10,000 XRP. To be eligible, all you have to do is upvote subscribe, remark XRP is king, and watch the video till the conclusion. The winners will be chosen next month and announced on the channel's community page on the final day of the SEC case against Ripple. Tomorrow, we'll talk about whether or not it's factual in this video because tomorrow is a big deal in this scenario. In this video, I'll explain why this is the case and how it will affect the final ruling if it occurs tomorrow. And what we may expect to happen next. In this video, I'm going to show you some very good indicators that we may be entering a highly bullish phase for cryptocurrencies. Make sure to watch the entire thing because you won't want to miss it. At the end of the film, I'd want to talk about some extremely good macro trends. We are witnessing a massive shift in how different people predict what will happen in the coming years. I'd want to start this video by talking about something that is currently bothering me. That is when the current House Majority Party took over from the previous party. There has been no word on when the SEC will be held accountable. They frequently said that they will thoroughly investigate Gary Gensler. As of yet, we haven't seen anything resembling fair enough. There has been a lot going on in our government. The entire SEC scandal is probably on pause. However, I do not want this subject to be put off any longer. I don't like playing politics on this channel. However, several of these candidates promised to investigate the SEC as soon as they gained control of the House. And we have yet to see anything. However, Gary Gensler's political party never meant to investigate him. The best opportunity for a probe into the SABC that we presently have is that we have a House that can call an investigation into the opposite political party, which is normally what they want to do to make each other appear bad. And it hasn't yet happened. I'm still hopeful that this will happen. However, the SA key component we must consider is that I want it to happen before Gary Gensler resigns because if the SEC is under investigation and Gary Gensler has already left, he will most likely get away with it. In all honesty, if the RIP less straightforward case is still outstanding, the future SEC chair will very likely simply resolve it. Then everyone simply pushes everything out of the way and moves on because I honestly want Gary Gentler to have to testify before Congress. We'll just have to wait and see what happens in this case. But the truth is that if we don't act soon and begin this process, he might get away with it. To be honest, the silver lining here is that Gary Gensler may depart the SEC with only the threat of an inquiry. And, as we are unlikely to all receive the justice we seek, this would be tremendously optimistic for cryptocurrencies. Unfortunately, that is how American politics works. These people are never genuinely confronted with legal difficulties. But only if cryptocurrencies can finally find a way to gain the legislation needed for widespread adoption. All we can ask for is that, so let's hope that even if the investigation against them is delayed, they still feel enough pressure to resign from the SEC because that is ultimately what we want. However, justice would be ideal since I want to go on and discuss how the SEC matter will be resolved tomorrow. Furthermore, it will not be completed on that day. But tomorrow is still a big day. Tomorrow is the deadline for document submission. This is a significant step in this circumstance. We have received documents from a party. For the past two years, it has been absolutely out of control. When I originally started covering this case, I had no idea or never believed it would run that long. The majority of the attorneys who were keeping an eye on this case, the majority of the attorneys who were actively monitoring this problem when I first started following it said, oh, we'd only go until the end of 2022. 2022 had arrived. The good news is that we just submitted the last documents, and I know many people are probably thinking, oh, I can't believe we're still not done. It amazes me that they are still supplying documents. The good news is that this procedure is nearly complete. We've had a few lawyers, and I know I merely claimed they were wrong in the past. However, many of them believe that, in the worst case scenario, Judge Taris will not rule on this topic until June or the summer. Right now, that is the worst case scenario. 
most individuals, including James K. File, a very, very well-respected attorney in this community who was widely appreciated by both John D. and Jeremy Hogan, tend to believe that Judge Tours will make her ruling by the end of March, which is just around the corner given that the case begins tomorrow. As a result, there won't be much else to do in this instance except wait. Furthermore, I feel this changes the position since we are now out of time, and I no longer expect a settlement will be made before summary judgment. The only chance we'd see something like this is if Judge Torres decided whether or not the Hyman emails would be made public before summary judgment. Many lawyers, however, feel that Judge Torres will simply determine this at summary judgment. And everything will be shown to us all at once. I have a feeling about this, and I've seen several predictions about it. And I believe that is correct. Judge Torres will most likely contact the lawyers for both Ripple and the SEC and say, Hey, hey, here's my final determination. You may accept this verdict, or you may elect to settle this dispute immediately. The outcome of Judge Torres's decision, in my opinion, will determine whether or not the case is concluded. And there is no question that this will happen. I've already discussed it with a few lawyers. They allege that occurrences like these occur regularly. To me, this appears to be the most likely outcome. The SAC will want to see if they can experience any unforeseen crazy until the very end. We'll appeal Judge Torres' decision and drag you through Corp for another year and a half. If they don't realize this when they enter into settlement talks with Ripple and say, okay, well, if you don't at least hide him in emails, this is extremely revolting right now. It's a shady tactic. The good news is that Ripple has been on the right side of this since the beginning. They have several points in their favor, including the fact that XRP is not a security and that they are accurate regarding the investment contract issue. Like the human emails, they have bodies hanging over the SEC's head. They don't want these details to come out. They'll go to any length to prevent it from happening. Because the deadline for document submission is tomorrow, I suspect we'll have to wait until at least March to find out what happens next. The SEC will most likely convene in a room and announce the final verdict. They must decide whether to accept the final ruling or settle the case, which I believe will occur. And the only reason I think it will settle is because of numbers. The majority of SEC lawsuits are resolved. The SEC will demand that certain information be made public. As a result, I'm willing to bet that we'll achieve an agreement in this case. Because Judge Torres is a fairly open book. I believe there will be at least a few items in the settlement, which is the only way that will genuinely occur. Yes, Kitty does not want the specifics of her decision made public. As a result, I expect the SEC will eventually become engaged in the case resolution. Early XRP sales, in my opinion, would be a satisfactory resolution to this disagreement. We'll have to wait and see how that works since today is not. Was XRP he based SRPB's treat you to trade? We'll have to wait and see how that goes since today is not. However, this is the most likely scenario in my opinion, because the SAC may still pursue other initiatives in the future, claiming that they only breached the law when they were genuinely clear, not when Ripple was violating SE Securities transactions. This gives the SEC the right to shut down projects regularly. And, as for Ripple, they would have clarity going forward and would have resolved all of their earlier actions with a simple payment to the SEC. This simply strikes me as the most likely future condition, which will immediately tell you that it is not the best win for all of Bitcoin. It is, however, a big triumph for Ripple, XRP, and XRP shareholders. And at this point, that's about all we can hope for. Because I'd like to mention some extremely encouraging developments in the Bitcoin business before wrapping up this video. That is, the macroeconomic environment is beginning to change significantly. I've been emphasizing this for a few weeks now. However, things are beginning to shift. Now, take a look at this startling news. This is important. Goldman Sachs no longer predicts a recession in Europe or other countries. I recall that the key rationale used to support the prediction that the U.S. would enter a recession was because Europe would also enter one. 
and it looks like these huge institutions have suddenly changed their thoughts regarding the danger of a recession, which would trigger the U.S. to enter a recession. And this suggests that all of the economic data hitting these banks are telling them that things are much better than they should be. For the time being. Perhaps we misread this. Furthermore, if we look at some of the graphics that accompany this data, we may see that the worst may have already passed. This indicates the risk of an economic slump based on how individuals conceptualize the economy rather than what happens in the market. And this is about the global market. While this applies to global markets rather than domestic markets, global and U.S. market dynamics are ultimately comparable. As you can see, the markets experienced a substantial drop almost every time we crossed this bottom dotted green line. Because the worst may have already passed. We have certainly recovered from that slump, as we can see. And it's undoubtedly the reason why other corporations, including Goldman Sachs, have stated that the recession may have already ended. Perhaps the worst is over. Perhaps we've already reached rock bottom. Given that I've been saying it for a long time, this would be highly optimistic to see a capital return to cryptocurrencies after the Federal Reserve stops rising interest rates. We've already removed a lot of the dead weight from this company. Now, all we need is for the macroeconomic situation to improve so that customers can feel better about investing in growth assets. And to do so, we will either avoid a recession or endure a very light one, which appears to be the case right now. Furthermore, it appears that the banks are already singing this song. And I just want to finish it. Finally, I'd like to conclude this video by showcasing what could happen with XRP. This was such an intriguing chart to me because we are in a very similar formation to what we witnessed in 2014 and 2017. This is the consolidation range that I often talk about on this channel, where the price moves to this triangle if an asset has continuously declining highs while having rising lows. The price must eventually move. And when it happens, there will be a significant increase to the upside or negative. In 2017, there was a massive surge to the upside that many people didn't think was possible. We appear to be in a similar scenario right now. Since we have the same consolidation pattern, we are simply waiting for XRP to gather enough momentum to burst out of this situation. The macro may provide motivation, but the rippling SEC case may also help. Let's see what happens. However, this object appears to be ready to blow up. But I digress. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. At least for the time being. It truly means a great deal.